<laughs> You're lucky you didn't get a uh, present then. <laughs> I can see some little white presents falling from them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everybody, this is Bailey with Gunji Shipwrecks and I'm John Paul Fallais and we're going to go diving. Got to get us a crate of scallops Matt, pay for the diesel. Try and get two crates if you, you can. Got to pay for the diesel. Yeah, you got to pay for <laughs> Okay. Right, go in a stern. Did you get a crate? Yeah, right. Not bad, I reckon there's a crate there. Thanks for paying for the diesel. Start heading over there. Yeah, get the ladder up. Get the ladder up, chop the flag down. Special treat for everyone. We're going somewhere different. We're going to head in an easterly direction to another island. An island with roughly about 14 miles of rugged coast. We're going to Sark. We're almost at Sark. It's almost nine miles. Welcome back below the waves. Uh, me and Paul are now diving on this, uh, what seems like a desert. Some good signs and some sand here, Leah, so we could be in for a bit of a treat. We might see a flatfish and we might see a ray. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. This is really nice gravel, very clean as well. There's no dust to it. It's basically old shells. Our plan for this dive was diving out onto the sand and swim a northeasterly direction towards the reef. Uh, it's the Espisseries Reef. For some reason, the tide on the surface was going north, and the time we got in the water and started swimming, it was going southwesterly. So we just carried on for the ride.
There's no way I'm going to catch up with this majestic beast. He's gone. He swims a lot faster than I do. As we've come down to the seabed with no surface marker boys, Matt has basically been following our bubbles. We have pre-agreed with him that we're going to send up our delayed surface marker boy. After about 15 minutes. This just lets Matt know exactly where we are. ready for us to go back up now. We're about halfway through our tank so we might as well go back up and use the rest of it but this time on the reef. Yeah drop us on the reef if you want. Well, take two, we didn't see much that time, we are on the desert, but it's all good, we've seen a big grey, we're going to go down again, waste the tank. Ah, that's better. Basically the water is so clear I could see it pretty much on the surface. Still 20 metres deep though. Definitely on the reef this time. Some people hate swimming through seaweed, I absolutely love it. This is sometimes where you can startle fish, if they're not expecting someone to swim out. A few times I've had a few bass like this. One weird thing about this reef is it forms like, the only way I can explain it is like bowls. So you can swim along and then all of a sudden there'll be a bowl into the floor. So we're going to see if we can find them. These white bits here are called kelp fur. It's really early in the year, but the time the end of the year comes, it'll be all over the fronds and also the stipe. This is kind of what I meant by um, like a bowl. Like there's reef almost all the way around and there's just one little exit back into the sea. So you get all these little overhanging ledges and stuff. This isn't as pronounced as some of the others, but still good. It's a coma fish, that's quite new to the Channel Islands, normally found in the Mediterranean. A female cuckoo ras. there's two female cuckoo ras. And the hole that looked like it used to have a lobster in. Quite a fractured rock around here, and it's pretty cool, because as you look inside it, there's all sorts, there's a squat lobster of a female cuckoo ras. Around here it's quite common to get these, these edible sea urchins. These used to be everywhere. There's a couple here, there's one there, there's one through the rocks there. These are obviously eating all the kelp that's around. So I let it um, sway in the tide and then you'd see it, it would latch onto it. Look at the growth on these stipes. So the stipes are the, um, well, if it was a tree, they'd be the trunk. Still 
fairly early in the year so there's not as much life as I was expecting. I think the sea temperature is still a bit cold. Um, 15 degrees seems to be the right temperature but we're still between 12 and 13 degrees. So Paul's going to send the delay back up again and then we're going to head back to the surface. Been 9 minutes. That's long enough. Probably got about 50 bar left in the tank so it is time we went up. Just we were about to come up I spotted this, it's a soapy starfish. These are one of the most common uh, starfish in the Mediterranean, but in Britain you can only find them in the Channel Islands. But look at my glove compared to it. That is proper, proper orange. They only grow to about 200 millimeters long, so this one is fully grown. It's pretty cool. Camera doesn't do it justice yet again. The color is so bright. Time for a photo opportunity. Look at the scenery here. All these uh, pink flowers just starting to grow. Matt and Paul now are going to do the uh, Julio Caves. It's a first for me in 25 years. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. It. Better be good, otherwise I'm going to come up and kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> So they're going to go in, you can't see the entrance, but it's just here. Not that one over there, just this one. Yeah, if you want to do the it's really good. So, check out the scenery though. Well, there go the boys. Gulio Passage, Gulio Cave even. That's, that's Gulio Passage, that's Gulio Cave. I hope they have a good dive. I'm not do, going to do this one. I've, uh, I've taken one for the team. I'm going to do the boat. Just make sure they're in the cave first and then uh, we'll head around. Breku. Sark. Gulio Passage. Come around here now, I'm gonna wait in here. Don't wanna cut the corner too quick because there's a nasty head that's uh, just there. You can just see it, it's just under the water here. Here's the boys, I'm going to pick them up now. Come out the back, I've got to be very careful here because there's some, uh, there's some rocks all over the shop, so I have to turn the camera off. Yeah. That was clean mooring. It was good. I have a barbecue now. We're not going to eat the scallops that Matt had earlier on. Um, Keeney's done some for us already, which was nice out of his, uh, out of his store. Are they in here? Did he put them in here? I can't remember. Yeah. Where did Keeney say he put the scallops, Matt, in his bucket? Yeah, under there. Ah, yeah. He's good to us. He's good to us. Matt Keeney shot some for us this morning, eh? Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, found, we found him. We found him. Thank, thanks for prepping that, Keeney. Keeney. Eh? None of us like uh, shocking scallops, so it saves us a bit of hassle. What are we going to do? Barbecue or frying pan? Uh, don't know, whichever. We'll do frying pan. Frying, frying pan, pan, yeah. Good skills. It's like that. Yeah. Titanium dive line. <laughs> oh, you can smell that. Smell-o-vision. 
Oh. Don't get any better than that. Doesn't work. Honestly. Oh god, it smells really good. Yeah, when we're swimming across. To our next location, Latak. Looks like there's a little bit of uh, waves washing up in there, but it's not too bad. Looks like we're in a race with some yachts. Or third from the end, actually. This is where we're going. Just around the back, and we'll go around this one. Hopefully, we don't get attacked by seals. Gunsy's over there. Jetu, Herm, Brecker, you can't see, is around the corner. Sark. And this is just an islet called Latak. We're going to go in here. We're going to come along this edge somewhere. Um, below us now is probably 50 metres of water, I reckon. You can almost get right up close and it's still 50 metres. It's like a wall. You see it as you go down, it's a wall and then stepped. Just me and Matt going in. I reckon my prediction is loads of craze, loads of nice colourful stuff and sheer walls to swim around. Quite nice. And another yacht's just overtaken us. down on the bottom, the visibility looks absolutely stunning, albeit a tiny bit green. There's fish from below me underneath this rock, probably wondering what I am. We've we'll landed down on this sort of staircase of rock, quite deep fall offs. There's loads of hints of colour, look at this, it's as if someone's got a, uh, an luminous orange marker and dab the rocks everywhere. These are tiny little sea anemones. I say I'm heading to the bottom. I'm going to go down in the boulders. Probably 35, 36 meters deep. down here. It's weird, check out the rocks, they almost look like the front of old ships. Gotta watch my bottom time now, I'm down to seven minutes already. 
Better check my air as well. It's not until you pop your lights on, you actually see how much colour there is down here. Far too deep for seaweed, but you do get some of these little uh, hydroids and stuff. Take a look what Matt's found. These are pink sea fans, and there's also a nurse hound shark egg attached to it. left until I go into deco. I've got to keep an eye on that now. Check this out, it's like a waterfall of sand coming down between these two reefs. You can't tell but this is almost 45 degrees. I wonder how the sand's even staying there. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I see these, I feel like a coconut tea cake. It makes me hungry. Gotta check my air. Ah, 190. Pretty much a full tank. The colourful male cuckoo wrasse. I think he's guarding some eggs here. Doing some weird body movement. Surrounded by male cuckoo rats now. They'll probably follow us for the rest of our dive. It's four minutes left now. I'll tell you what we need to do, we need to go up and then shallow off and then we'll be okay. Get one get more time. This is quite a rare thing to see crab bots in sulk. But look at it, it's like brand new. Literally, hasn't been down very long. There's no bait in it, so I'm not going to catch anything. Thinking about it, I don't know where the buffs are on the end, because I didn't see any buffs on the surface. Really need to think about going shallower. Gives us extra bottom time. So I'm going to start heading up this boulder field. Just when I thought I wasn't going to see any crayfish, there's one here hiding. So he could have been attacked by something because he's only got one antennae. Well, two antennae, but half of it snapped off. Give him a little tickle. It's only a baby, this one. In Sark, they were protected, but that was back in 2018. I think it was they were only protected for three years, so maybe they have started fishing for them again. Certainly less in number than we normally see. But that could be just this time of year. 
or it could be the fact that there's seals around, more seals around, or more predators from, I don't know. I'm not qualified to uh, pass judgment on that. I just know we're seeing a lot less at the moment. Check out these little white sea anemones. I think these can be southern cup corals, but I'm not sure. the rocks around here they're absolutely caked in these Jordan enemies they come in loads of different colors these ones are lilac or purple yeah again I'll get the easy job I'm just filming Matt while he puts up he's delayed I've done a right today I've not had to put mine on once When it goes up, it reminds me of them wacky waving inflatable arm men you get outside car sales places. Four minutes and we'll go up. I just want to have a look around this corner. Some brass are swimming around. See if we can follow them. See the tide whizzing round, it's pushing all the plankton back into our face. Wherever you get these bits that hang over, you always get the jawline enemies growing underneath. They're still following us. Right, I think it's about time we went up now. I'm running out of time. Yep, three minutes. Let's head back up. So, as we headed back to Guernsey, 45 minutes on the boat, I decided to have a sleep before going and doing some more scalloping. Didn't take you along for that one because I needed scallops. And I didn't want to, uh, didn't want to do too much filming. Racing her in now, look, there's Margaret Kay. This one we're on, Sylvia Kay, and that one's Margaret Kay, that's the mothership. Albeit it's the younger daughter. You can see from the uh, the, tide, the dive we just done for them scallops, the tide was screaming. There was no way I was going to do any filming. Not a bad day's diving to be honest. What do we do? One, two, three, four. Four dives. Deepest at 36. Couple at 20. 
that shallow one at 15. Gonna get back in there and have a coffee. Go spend the evening with the missus and the kids. Gonna take away. Here's the mothership, here she comes. We've got the punters on the back, they've been dangling. I wonder if they've had any fish. Is he gonna beat us in? I think he is gonna. He looks like he's gonna beat us in. He is. Oh, imagine that, running out of fuel just to go in the harbour. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, this is still okay, more than okay. Oh, that's swollen. Gonna get off, drop the hammer. Ramming speed. <laughs> he has, he's beating us. That's it, we're back. I'm quite sure what the time is now. Gaff duty. And that's it, that's thanks from our slot for uh, coming along with us. I'll catch you on the next tide.